Hey Ryan Rice, welcome back to the channel. So today I want to talk to you guys about the pros and cons of kayak fishing. So let's get started with the cons. You know, when I first started kayak fishing, I sold my boat and I knew what I was getting in for, but for all of you who's never done this before or just getting into it, you know that there's some cons and there's some pros, but the pros to me, in my opinion, outweigh the cons, but let's get into the cons. So if you've never done this before, you know, one of your first cons is how do you transport your kayak? You know, especially if you have a car, etc. That's your first challenge. You have to make sure that you have a way to transport your kayak either you know a bed of a truck roof rack you know a rack on a car or a trailer you know that's that's your first cons if you think you can just grab a kayak and throw it on your roof you know especially with these fishing kayaks it they're heavy and you know it's not as easy to move around as the more inexpensive ones second got right into it you know a fishing kayak can be heavy you know you can just take your kayaks that you have and just have a paddle and get something around like 70 80 pounds so it's not too bad but for some people you know especially an older person or uh, a smaller person or a younger person that may still be too heavy so you may need help loading your kayak now there's ways and there's a whole bunch of ideas out there on youtube and you know there's ways to transport your kayak and get it where you need it by yourself you know i have a video out there i use the will i loader currently to get on top of my roof rack you know my kayak even when i break it down to what i'm going to transport it in it's still probably a good 120 pounds or so you know if not more because i do leave some gear on it when i transport it so you know i use the will i loader that helps me get it up top on top of my roof rack but it's still you know it's still challenging it's not super super easy but it's not super hard you know it, it's okay for me right now but I am going back to a trailer uh, coming up in a few months. So, you know, the reason why going back to the trailer is because it's just for that simple fact that, you know, I want to get the trailer again now before I get older and it's just going to be too tough with the uh, loader getting on top of my roof rack. Number three, if you haven't done this before and you may be a little bit concerned about stability, you know, if you get those inexpensive kayaks that are not super stable, you know, some people have the fear of falling in the water. You know, I have a pontoon style with the Hobie, so it's super stable, but even so, I've only, I've never tipped it completely, but I have fallen out of it twice, and both times it was my fault. Uh, you know, one time I lost some tackle overboard, so I leaned too far, and, you know, it was a little bit beginning of my kayak, I get not say career, but the beginning of me kayak fishing. So I didn't really understand my kayak and how far I could push it. So I just leaned over like I was in a boat and I fell right into the water. But I was only about four feet of water. Uh, the second time around, you know, I was coming up to the bank. It was dark. I forgot something in my truck. So I went back and, you know, I looked at my fish finder. So oh, it's only like 18 inches. Well, not paying attention, my kayak kind of drifted back away from the bank. I stepped off into five feet of water. So obviously I went right in face first and got wet, but we still continued the day on for that. So, you know, that's another con, you know, some people are, are scared to get on the kayak, especially, you know, in the big water areas where it's windy and you got a lot of boat traffic. So you just gotta be, you know, conscious and aware of where you take your kayak. But if you get the right kayak, they're very stable. I mean, I'm a bigger guy. Uh, you know, I know a lot of big guys who kayak fish and they load these kayaks down and Even in big water situations and you know heavy wake from boats or just being out in the salt water where you have You know bigger swells. These are stable once you're on them for a while You will understand your kayak your tipping point, you know your second stability point You know like you can see I can move around quite a bit, but you know you get used to being on the kayak speaking of stability that's another thing you got to take an account for too is those windy big bodies of water you know you need a way to be able to learn how to anchor yourself i mean you have the motor guide i3 which has spot lock which can anchor you up i use the uh, anchor wizard to drop my anchor when i want to be uh you know positioned but you know with a pedal drive you know you you will start learning how to position your kayak in the wind be able to adjust to the wind as you're fighting a fish or while you're getting pushed around. Like right now, I got a little bit of wind right now that's you know drifting me around. You will learn as you get into it that the wind is not a bad thing. I mean, you get better fishing on windier days anyway. So you'll learn how to adapt to the wind. 
you know, but that's a con for some people. Uh, another con is it's more work than having a boat. I mean, you have, depending on how you transport it, you know, I used to have an enclosed trailer so I could pretty much leave the kayak as is. I'd pull up into the enclosed trailer, just put a little strap over, you know, on the floor and away I went. So there's really not much breakdown, but most people don't use an enclosed trailer uh, for kayak fishing. You know, they use a lot more gas mileage and then having an open trailer, throw it in the bed of your truck. So you got to break these down. You know, you're going to have to take the gear that you go out fishing with, take it off your kayak, put it away. And the same thing, when you go out fishing for the day, you got to load it back on your kayak. So it takes some work. It takes some time to set up. It's just not going to the ramp and, you know, launching your, your kayak and away you go. There's a little bit of work to it, a little bit of prep, you know, but that's the part of the game. You just give yourself some extra time to get out there and get your gear together. Uh, the more you do it, the faster you can get at it. Basically, if I didn't have to set my cameras and stuff, I could be on my kayak in about 10 minutes with everything set on it. So right now it's taken me about, I would say probably about 15 to 20 minutes, depending how fast I move, to really get everything set up and you know get out in the water the way I want to. It's not a lot of time. Speaking, you know, as far as work, they're a little bit more work than having a boat. And a lot of people don't like that. A lot of people don't want to have that haggle, that main, you know, that that part of the day they have to deal with. But you know, kayak fishing ain't for everybody. So another con is it's you're using your body to get around. I mean, not you have a you know strictly have a motor, but at one point your motor is going to fail. You are going to have to paddle. You know, so I started right out with a pedal drive kayak, and you know your leg is your strongest muscle. So that took a lot of me going out and being totally exhausted for the day. But you will wear yourself out a little bit more than if you were just on a boat because you are physically moving your kayak around. You know, if you get just a paddle kayak and you've never done it before, you're going to be sore. I mean, you're going to be sore after that first couple of days. You know, you're going to have your arms being used, your chest area being used, your back area being used. You're going to be sore, but that's going to fade off, you know, so don't let that deter you from going out, you know, and grabbing the kayak. You know, another con to kayak fishing for some people may be that you spend most of your time sitting down. You know, I stand up quite a bit in my kayak, you know, to stretch my legs, to sight fish, etc. That's why it's good having a stable kayak. But, you know, most people may have a hard time sitting down. It's a different position from, you know, fishing on a bass boat or fishing on a boat where you're standing. You got to change and adapt to how you, you know, bring your retrieve in how you set your hook it's a different feel but it's very easy to adapt to um, you know i had really no problem with it you know at first i was getting a lot of lures and trees etc because i wasn't like i guess my depth per depth perception was maybe off because i was sitting instead of standing and i didn't feel like i was as accurate with casting but once you're in the kayak for you know extended period of time you know after probably i would say maybe five trips out if not less you will see how you have to cast your you know your rod how you have to set your hook but you know it's just another little con that some people may look at that you're sitting down so you know a comfortable seat is a very very important thing on your kayak i have a kayak cushion most guys that spend you know a lot of time on the water or extended period of time on water have the kayak cushions when they came out with that and i got that and you know, i used to just use just a seat for four years but once i got the kayak cushion about a year ago it's a world of difference. So you definitely want to invest in the kayak cushion as well. As far as other cons, to me, there's really not many more cons than that. You know, you gotta, you know, they're a little bit more work to set up. You gotta be able to transport them, you know, especially when they're heavier, you gotta be able to figure out how you're gonna get it on your truck, you know, or on the roof of your car, you know, so there's a little bit more work with that. You got your setup time and, you know, you do have to be a little conscious of where you're going you know getting to know your kayak your stability on your kayak so you don't go overboard you know always wear your pfd i don't care how strong of a swimmer you are always wear your pfd and i will put that as another con because if you've never have to wear a pfd or never worn a pfd before it may feel a little awkward to you at first when you get used to wearing a pfd it's second nature it's like having a sweatshirt on it doesn't bother you, you know, spend the money on a comfortable, you know, PFD. They have just the ones that go over your, you know, over your shoulders that, you know, instantly inflate once you hit the water or you pull the tab and it inflates. You have those two. Those are okay if you don't like having a bigger PFD, but I don't wear those just for the simple fact that, yes, are they a lot more comfortable? Absolutely. But if you're having a, a real hard time and you're struggling and you fall overboard, you know, whether you're having chest pains or whatnot, 
that may not be the first thing you think of that you have to pull that tab to, to inflate it you know that you have a self you know inflating one but they can get pricey too so you know i believe in having a, a pfd that already has the flotation built into it and it's always on you so you know it's always ready that when you hit that water now as far as the pros once you start you will see what a difference it is how more free you feel from being you know not being in the boat you know just being out with you know by yourself or with your buddies it's a totally different experience and once you start it you know either you're gonna like it right away or you're not gonna like it and you're gonna give up but you know as soon as i hit the water the first day and not having that boat you know and having that maintenance and stuff that was a big factor of it but i just realized like, wow this is really really simple you know this is fun i mean the experience of you being this close to the water you know fighting a fish that possibly is going to pull you around it's totally different than being on the boat and it's just a different feeling i mean people who kayak fish we do this because we love this and the whole work part of it and setting it up and everything just becomes another day on the water i mean it's so simple once you get into it that it's not it's not a hassle it's not a struggle it's an enjoyment you know my time in the morning set my kayak up and the anticipation of getting on the water just it's just a just that cool feeling you know you just love doing this and you know i i can't stop doing it you know i've been doing it now for five years and i can't see fishing any other way will i go on a, you know do i go on boats still absolutely you know those are the days where you just kind of go out and hang out with people and you know you do charter fishing or whatever but you know those are fun as well but kayak fishing is something that once you get into it and you understand it the love for this sport from so many people out there now and it's constantly grown is just it's unbelievable another pro is if you own a boat or you got rid of your boat and you're getting into kayak it's so so much cheaper there's a lot less maintenance there's very little maintenance to kayak i mean there's some kayaks you don't have to do anything to you know especially if you have no motors no batteries no nothing you know you can get into the sport so inexpensively I just suggest though, always get the kayak that you can afford to start out with because your $300 kayak to your $2,000 kayak is a world of difference, a world of stability, the difference in this everything all the way around. Pro to kayak fishing is that it's so simple. You can just throw it you know, on the bed of your truck, you can throw it on your roof, and you can just go fishing. Get out there without worrying about Oh, I have to stop for gas. Oh, I, I forgot. I have to get the oil change, you know. Oh, the, the, you know, the lower unit or, you know, anything like that starting to fail on me. And it's just thousands of dollars that you have to spend to be able to maintain your engine and other, you know, characteristics on a boat that can get expensive. I mean, boats take a beating, you know, especially at high speeds hitting big waves. So, you know, kayak fishing is a way to get on the water, get off the banks, and you can do it very inexpensively and very simple. Another pro to kayak fishing is you can have solitude. You know, if you don't have that boat, you don't say, oh, can, you don't have your buddies or anybody asking, oh, can I go fishing with you? You know, you can go by yourself and be and have your solitude if that's what you like. You know, and, and if you want, then you can have your buddies come with you, but they all, you know, everybody has their own kayak and you can go separate ways if you want, if you want a little bit of peace. You know, so to me, that's a pro. You know, not having, having the ability to go out by yourself and just taking in nature, you know being in solitude you know giving you know giving yourself a, a reset you know from a bad week at work or or you know personally it's just a way to reset and just have that solitude and being one with nature basically you know you can really have some good times on a kayak by yourself and not have much to worry about as far as maintenance and all that stuff. Speaking of maintenance and boats, when you have a kayak, you can go where boats cannot go. You know, you can also go on bodies of water where they don't allow boats, but kayaks only or electric motor only. It gives you the ability to access so many different bodies of water, or if you're on a large body of water, it gives you access to, you know, deep backwoods. You know, you can take your kayak, you can get out of it, you can drag it over tree stumps, you can get on the backside where you know nobody else can get to. And that gives you the ability to get to fish, you know, as we say, dumb fish. Fish that never really see much pressure. And, you know, be able to have a great day on the water catching giants so far back you know you know in the backwaters off of lakes or you know on rivers where boats can't go and you're going to experience things that you'd never see if you're on a boat 
So, you know, that's a huge pro to kayak fishing is where you can get where nobody else can get, you know, so that's great. You know, it's, there's a lot of places you can get, you know, via land, you know, and walk in the woods, but there's a lot of places where you have to get there first by water. Then you have to get out, you know, of your kayak, drag it along or whatever, and you can get on the other side. So that's a huge pro to me is that you can get to where the dumb fish are, you know, which makes it really, really cool. And you get to see things that a lot of other people never seen before, you know, find those new waters that you've never seen before. Once you're in a kayak and you experience, you're either going to love it or hate it. And, but once you love it, you're going to see all these years that you've been on a boat that you've never been on a kayak before, or you're just getting in the kayak fish and you're going to really see what you've been missing for all these years. So if you're on the fence about kayak fishing, don't be. It's a great, great way of getting on the water. You know, those cons that I talked about here at the beginning of this video are so small that you, once you're on the water, no matter how you got there, anything you did in the morning, you know, and you're saying, oh, I had to drag the kayak really far. But once you're on the water, all those cons go away, no matter what happened in the morning you know or in the afternoon or whenever you got to the water just being on the water on a kayak is something totally different that you have to experience it for yourself to understand that's really my cons and my pros uh you know there may be more cons but there's nothing that i see that jumps out at me that's saying ah, don't do this you know that con is this makes us totally horrendous there, there's really no bad con to kayak fishing you adapt you know even with a boat you know there's still cons to boats too there's a lot of cons to boats you get past those cons and you adapt to being in a kayak you just realize that this is probably one of the best ways to fit that one of the best ways you could possibly fish and really enjoy the water nature being out with your buddies on you know come out with other kayaks you just realize that being with your friends too as well it's it's just a great way. It's just like going in a group of like mountain biking. You know, they usually travel in groups a lot of times or they go by themselves, but you know, being in a group too as well uh, is also really, really fun, you know, kayak fishing. You know, and with KBF, what I do and all the other like local uh, groups, you can have a great time. You can really gain a lot of good friends. They become family to you because you all share the same passion and you really love what you guys, you know, we all love what we do. And it just be, you just become like a family. I mean, you know, kayak fishing, fishermen, I would say probably 95% of them, it's like going out with your brother. I mean, it is, you know, or your father or your mother, or your sister. The way that we support each other on the water is, it totally has blown my mind. You know, all the years of boating, you know, being, you know, using a boat and, it's almost like cutthroat, you know, people just try to jump to that spot or, you know, being on the ramps, nobody cares who was in line first. People used to cut, you know, cut in front of me. So inconsiderate, but kayak fishing, you don't get that. You know, you have your few bad, you know, you have your few bad eggs. We all, you know, in everything that we do, but overall, we are the tightest family. It's almost like being part of a football team. It's something that once you start it and you realize what you have been missing and what you have now, you definitely don't want to stop it. So. so you can keep kayak fishing as simple or sophisticated as you want it to be, but don't hesitate about getting on the bandwagon and getting on into kayak fishing. This sport is growing, you know, as a family, you know, a lot of groups have started now and you can really have some fun either competing or not competing in competitions. But once you start, you're never going to want to stop again. I can promise you that. It's something that just, it kind of just gets into your system. That's the way I'm trying to say it. Since I've started this, this is all I think about. When I'm at work, I'm thinking about being on the kayak. When I'm home, I'm thinking about being on the kayak. It's just something that I can't stop thinking about. And it's just turned into such a passion and huge commitment that I'm so glad I started and not turning back. So definitely do not hesitate about getting into kayak fishing. Pros outweigh the cons by a mile. You know, it's such a great way to get on the water, such a great way to spend time either by yourself or with friends or with family. It's just, it just, it's, there's no way to explain it until you're on the water yourself and be able to experience being on the kayak. It's just such a great, great way to enjoy being on the water. I hope this kind of gives you guys some perspective of kayak fishing. 
as always, I hope you guys got something out of this video and protect yourself from the sun. And I'll catch you guys on water. Thanks for watching.